Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Let's give a huge round of applause for this incredible show, Warping. It's so incredible to celebrate beauty on Broadway. And um, there's such an incredible group of people here, old clients, new friends, and I wish we all had more time for mingling, so we'll have to do that another time. My name is Jody Katz. I'm the founder and creative director of Base Beauty Creative Agency. This year marks our 10th year in business. I will be moderating tonight's star-studded panel. We are delighted to be joined by Laura Geller, founder of Laura Geller of New York. Ukanwa Ojo, Senior Vice President, CoverGirl. <laughs> Catherine Zuber, Tony Award winning costume designer of War Paints. <laughs> and Christina Bennett, Senior Director of Global Public Relations, Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> we are here tonight to honor beauty pioneers of yesterday with industry pioneers of today. Base Beauty's job is to shine a spotlight on beauty brands. So when this opportunity to work with Warpaint came around, we just couldn't resist. It is so cool to celebrate beauty on Broadway. As an entrepreneur in the beauty industry, I strongly connect with many of Warpaint's timeless themes. Most especially, it's focused on navigating life-work balance. I started my business 10 years ago to own how I spend my time. But as the show shined a light on exactly how challenging it truly is to achieve a sense of balance. The show also magnifies the seduction of growing a business and the challenges of facing the competition. These are topics that give me FOMO and they test my grace and patience daily. In our podcast series, Where Brains Meet Beauty, I discuss the same themes one-on-one -on -one with beauty execs. It, this makes real, tonight really, really special because this is like a souped up version of our podcast. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear about how the show's themes impact our panelists. Let's start the conversation with a question that I have for all of you. We'll start with Laura. The beauty industry is fueled by passion. This was clear from our characters' approach to their work. Why beauty for you? I think it was fueled by rivalry, actually. <laughs> and I think it really worked. Um, I think beauty is just, when you think about beauty, and you think about how this show could propel so much interest, I think it really is an art. It's a different kind of art, but I believe that every single woman, no matter who she is, what walk of life, wants to be involved in it some way. As an example, like my clients through the years, even if they would come in into my store back in the day and say that they're natural, they don't wear a lot of makeup, they still collected a ton of makeup. <laughs> so I went into the business because I was infatuated with how it can be so transformative. I think you saw a lot of that tonight. And it really transformed my life. And that was what really fueled me for wanting to go into this from a very young age. Thank you. Uh, hard question, why beauty? Um, I think for me, um, as a, I'm the daughter um, of a fashion designer, and so fashion and beauty really was part of my entire life. And it really started just from wanting to be like my mom. <laughs> and just watching her um, be infatuated with beauty and with fashion. Um, and now I'm actually new to the beauty industry. I, I joined about six months ago. Um, and for me, it feels great to have my professional work line up with my personal passion. Um, and I feel very privileged to be part of an industry that just helps women feel awesome about themselves every day. Like, it really is a privilege, and um, I love it. I really do. Um, I'm a costume designer, and uh, I'm very excited to be working on a project that is about beauty. But a lot of times costume design is about other elements and sometimes it's dramatic or sad or funny and it's not always about beauty. But this has been a joy in that it is celebrating um, the art of artifice and, um, and as Helena Rubinstein says, um, there are, are no ugly women, just lazy ones. I think that's <laughs> such a charming statement and uh, it's wonderful to bring beauty into the world so um, yeah that's I, I'm a little different Shout I think out to and then I think beauty
beauty has been instilled in me probably since I was a toddler. I have four brothers, so it's a little bit of a rebellion. I wanted to be at um, The Little Mermaid, and I would end up at Terminator. And so I think that I picked like the girliest thing I could possibly do. And there are all sorts of pictures of me as a young child with makeup all over my face. I loved to sneak into my mom's stuff when I had a babysitter. There was one very lackluster babysitter when my parents were bringing home my younger brother from the hospital, wasn't paying attention. So my brother and I made me pretty for the new baby. And so there are all sorts of pictures. So it's just been ever since then. And actually, a good babysitter actually helped me get into the beauty industry and introduced me to Hearst magazines where I started interning in beauty departments. Well, we can start with you for the next question, Christina. Our characters were distinctive for many reasons, but one of them was that they were women leading massive businesses with their name on the door. Describe what being a woman in this business feels like for you. I, I really love this business, and I think what's so unique about it is that it's fueled by women. And it's such, a, it's such a different atmosphere than any other place that, that I've worked or I hear my friends speak about, and it's a business full of really bright, creative women who are working to create things for women and to help them and to make them feel their best. And so I think that's what's most exciting for me. And it's been great to have these amazing female mentors who have really guided me all along my career. And so I've been very lucky to have women who believed in pulling others up with them. And that's been a really special experience. The wonderful thing about War Paint is that our two leads are two women. Um, usually it's a man or, and a woman or two men. And so it's quite unusual to have two powerful women as leads. And for these two women to be women that uh, started their own businesses at a time where it was really unusual uh, and to be so successful at it um, and celebrating the world of beauty uh, is uh, quite remarkable. So. Um, Again, I'm a little different from everyone else up here. In that. I'm, not, I'm not from uh, the beauty industry, but um, I love makeup. <laughs> can, we just, can I ask a follow-up question of you, since yeah. you, um, you're in a room of beauty people? Um, how much do you get to influence the beauty look as you're developing the costume design? Oh, um, well, we have to do head-to-toes as designers, so we, um, I do a sketch, and it involves um, the style of the hair and the makeup is included in the sketch and I work with the makeup designer and the hair designer to create uh, the look for each character. And you know, sometimes in costume design it's uh, intentionally not beautiful. Sometimes it should be maybe a little overdone or underdone or, I mean, that's part of the charm. It's not always perfection. Um, but again, um, in this particular project, it was wonderful to celebrate um, the um, striving for per perfection, even if people don't always achieve it. <laughs> I thought the women was so boss. Um, it was awesome. And I'm so glad that we were a part of today because I think it just reminded us that as an industry, we stand on the shoulder of giants. Um, and that was such a great reminder today. And I love being a part of the beauty industry because it's the first industry I'm a, I've been a part of where there's just so many women just running things. Uh, my entire leadership team is full of women and a lot of them are here. Um, and it's just great to just have that girl magic um, and to grow businesses together, to figure out problems together um, and they're just not that many industries where you see that many of us um, really collaborating together and working together and all getting along um, to build something um, truly great that makes people feel better about themselves and I think it's a privilege to be honest to be part of that. Well this is really a full circle night for me because I'm sitting on a stage and the very first job I ever had was on Broadway. Yeah. So I'm blown away, actually, from this because I actually used to get hired by a well-known costume designer that you know to work on Broadway shows to come in and help with the leads of the actors and actresses. And I would create the makeup. And actually, I never expected to start a business. That was all because of the love of what I do. And it really sort of guided me. And I never really thought about having roadblocks with, uh, you know, amongst men or leadership issues. I was doing what I loved. It was makeup. In fact, I ran into somebody here tonight who's another famous makeup artist. 
And I will tell you that for me, I never encountered an issue ever with a male in this industry. And if I had, I wouldn't have cared. I would have just blown him away. I mean, for me, I mean, I would have been like, get out of here, you're in my way. But my, my whole issue is that for all of us as women, no matter what role you're in, I think the business of beauty is so welcoming to do so many different things. And as I said, it took me, what, well, more than 40 years to get where I am today in this industry. But I've loved every milestone I've hit, and that's what endured me to keep going. And if you would have told me 40 years ago that I would have had a namesake brand named after myself, I would have said, are you kidding? <laughs> and in stores and across the countries, I would have not believed it. So I'm elated to be here. He used to be originally with Prescriptus. Sorry, I shouldn't be doing this, but I was so excited to see him. Okay. Well, I just like to a actually answer my own question um, because I I get to meet a lot of brands um, as an agency owner, and I met an entrepreneur on the West Coast who was starting a new salon chain. And before starting the salon chain, she worked in tech in California, and she really had PTSD from all of the um, challenges of being a woman in her former industry. And um, I felt for her, because if she could just spend a week with me here in New York, in this business, meeting the people I meet, having the conversations I, I have, um, I don't feel any of that, and I never felt any of that. Um, prior to um, working in beauty, I was in advertising, also so many women, so much women, female leadership. Um, okay, so let's move on. I answered my own question. Okay, so now the, about the rivalry. The rivalry between the characters was so fierce. Our marketplace today has intense competition from many more players. How does this abundance of brands, retailers, and platforms impact the way you think about your talents and opportunities? We can start with Laura. Okay. Well, I actually think the competitive rivalry is still alive. And I think it's what fuels all of us. And I think it's healthy. I think there's room for everybody. I, um, like I, I started so many years ago <laughs> that I actually can remember when there were barely any brands out in the marketplace like there are today. And I will tell you that I can't believe how many new brands I sit on an indie advisory panel for Cosmetic Executive Women, um, which is a wonderful organization if you don't know about it, but I have a feeling everyone in this room does know about it. Um, and I will tell you that I think there's room for everybody, but what I think it's doing is I think it keeps us on our toes. Because I think you look to the left and you look to the right and you go, how'd they do that? In fact, I just had a conversation today with my marketing exec, my head of marketing, Amanda, and I said to her, I never thought it would happen that our brand, when we invented a product and created a product, would have so much buzz that across the world, we are getting calls and contacts about a launch of a new product. It is our 20th anniversary of our brand this year. Um, I've been at it a little bit longer than that, but our brand of 20 years. And the, the opportunity because of social media and influencers today has changed the landscape, obviously. Um, beauty editors were our go-to, they still are. But I think that the rivalry is coming from all the new and young people out there that are keeping some of us uh, on our toes a little bit. Did I answer your question? I think you did. Thank you. <laughs> um, competition, I think competition is healthy. I think it keeps you on your toes. I think it, um, it keeps you listening. And if anything that we learned from um, watching the show today, which is actually really true, about what we do is we have to become obsessed with listening to the actual consumers and not to each other. Um, because I think we can become so obsessed with each other and keeping up with each other that we can lose sight of the very people that we exist to make happy or we exist to delight. And so I guess the lesson for me is to learn as much as we can from each other and be challenged and be pushed um, by each other, but at the end of the day, our jobs, my job, is to make whomever it is that chooses cover girl um, to feel like they made a really great choice. And in that little moment, whether it's with a lipstick or with a highlighter or with a smoky eye, to make her 
feel a little bit better um, and to feel beautiful in whatever way she defines that. And if I can keep my focus on that, it's so easy to not be distracted, I think, by competition. such beautiful answers. Um, I think that uh, in our uh, production that uh, the rivalry between the two women is one rivalry. Uh, there's also the rivalry between the man and the story about who is the most um, effective um, advertising uh, executive within the company. There's also the rivalry with uh, the passing of time of how um, when Revson comes into the picture and uh, the moving forward of a youth market and uh, marketing that um, they have rivalries within themselves of hanging on to um, a world that no longer um, was in existence in, in terms of the marketplace. So um, I think within our, our play, there's so many uh, rivalries beyond the rivalry between the two women, which ultimately, ultimately at the end, I think they really respected each other and they each kept the other one at their best um, from the challenges that they put in their path. And I think that the rivalry, especially in this show, showed that they were fueling each other and that they made each other better, they made what they gave to the women so much better. And it was really just the two of them at that time. And so it was this neck and neck, you know, sort of rivalry. But now what's so interesting is that it's expanded outside of just the US and Europe creating products. Think about all the innovation coming from Asia. Like we were talking about the influencers and there's so many different things that are making us think differently and come up with different products or services for our consumers. And so that to me is, is so fun to actually go and test all the competitive products. I think that no one here doesn't love going to test the products. I still get excited every time a new collection comes in and it's just fun to see what other people people are doing and to be inspired by them and to see what works for me and to get feedback. I love, I have little focus groups at basically every holiday and I get feedback on the products and it's so interesting to get feedback on what they like and what they don't like and what works for them. And so I think competition amongst our consumers but also worldwide has really um, made it a much um, more challenging industry. Thank you so much. So unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. We didn't get to the question about life-work balance. So if anybody wants to have that conversation, we can have a long lunch date and sit around the table and talk about that, because that's the one that really is um, deep in my heart. So in closing, I'd like to just say that this is so interesting and exciting. I'm so happy that you could all be here with us. Thank you to the Warpaint team, especially Anna and Kendall, for helping to coordinate this event. Thanks to all of our guests, and of course, my deepest thanks to our panel, Laura Geller, Lukama Ojo, Catherine Zuber, and Christina Bennett. Thank you so much. <laughs>